Chapter 16 of The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Bryce, said the old woman, get away from that rabbit. I ain't paying you to stand and stare. Yes, ma'am, said Bryce. He wiped his nose with the back of his hand and continued to look up at Edward. The boy's eyes were brown with flecks of gold shining in them. Hey, he whispered to Edward. A crow settled on Edward's head and the boy flapped his arm and shouted, Go on, get! And the bird spread his wings and flew away. Bryce, shouted the old woman. Ma'am, said Bryce, get away from that rabbit. Do your work. I ain't gonna say it again. Yes, am said Bryce. He wiped his hand across his nose. I'll be back to get you, he said to Edward. The rabbit spent the day hanging by his ears, baking in the hot sun, watching the old woman and Bryce weed and hoe the garden. Whenever the woman wasn't looking, Bryce raised his hand and waved. The bird circled over Edward's head, laughing at him. What was it like to have wings, Edward wondered. If he had had wings when he was tossed overboard, he would not have sunk to the bottom of the sea. Instead, he would have flown in the opposite direction, up into the deep, bright blue sky. And when Lolly took him to the dump, he would have flown out of the garbage and followed her and landed on her head, holding on with his sharp claws. And on the train, when the man kicked him, Edward would not have fallen to the ground. Instead, he would have risen up and sat on top of the train and laughed at the man. Ka, ka, ka. In the late afternoon, Bryce and the old lady left the field. Bryce winked at Edward as he walked past him. One of the crows lighted on Edward's shoulder and tapped him with his beak at Edward's china face, reminding the rabbit with each tap that he had no wings, that not only could he not fly, he could not move on his own at all, in any way. Dusk descended over the field, and then came true dark. A whippoorwill sang out over and over, it was the saddest sound Edward had ever heard. And then came another sound, another song, the hum of a harmonica. Bryce stepped out of the shadows. Hey, he said to Edward. He wiped his nose with the back of his hand and then played another bit of song on the harmonica. I bet you didn't think I'd come back, but here I am. I come to save you. Too late, thought Edward, as Bryce climbed the pole and worked at the wires that were tied around his wrist. I am nothing but a hollow rabbit. Too late, thought Edward, as Bryce pulled the nails out of his ears. I am only a doll made out of china. But when the last nail was out and he fell forward into Bryce's arms, the rabbit felt a rush of relief, and the feeling of relief was followed by one of joy. Perhaps, he thought, it is not too late, after all, for me to be saved.